I remember this TV cooking show a while back called Ready, Set, Cook. The contestants were given $10 to buy whatever they could to create something awesome. I've turned that into whatever is in my cupboards and I call it Ready, Set, Cook. And here we are, stuck at home, and we all have to be creative to feed our families and still bring a smile to their faces. This is some old-fashioned home cooking right here. I put this together with what I had available and it came out amazing. The inspiration came from two classic meals, chicken scarpagliello, which is done with chicken, sausage, and potato with some nice cherry peppers, and one pan Spanish chicken and rice, or arroz con pollo. So let's get this in the oven before I starve to death. You're cooking with crank. Okay, so here's what you're gonna need. Bone-in chicken thighs, Italian sausage, sweet or hot, yellow onion, four cloves of garlic, four scallions, two ribs of celery, one large carrot, half a can of chili peppers, some tomato sauce, but in this case, I took what was left of the peeled and de-seeded tomatoes I made the other day. The video for that is in the description. Two cups rice, four cups chicken stock, fresh cilantro, fresh limes, but in this case, I don't have fresh limes, so I used lime juice, butter, salted or unsalted, half a can of cannellini beans or white beans, extra virgin olive oil. Preparation is everything. Let's get that out of the way. First, let's season the flour. You can use any spice combination you want. It's your kitchen. I used fresh chopped parsley, salt and pepper, chili powder, and a generous amount of Sanzon Tropical. Mix it around and blend all those spices with the flour. I'll do two different cuts with the onion, carrot, and celery. I'll show you why in a minute. Do a rough chop with most of the onion. And with the rest, do a fine chop and keep them separate from one another. You know, social distancing, or in this case, culinary distancing. Now, do the same thing with the celery. Do bite-size angle cuts with one rib, and finely chop the second rib. Same thing with the carrot. This carrot's pretty big, so I'll do most of it at bite-sized pieces and the rest finely chopped. With the green onion, separate the greenest part of the onion and set it aside. Cut the white part of the onion and add it to the finely chopped bowl. Now grab the green part of the onion and cut really thin slices and save it till the end. We'll use this to garnish. Uncooked green onion is one of my favorite garnishes because of the added flavor. Now do a rough mince of the garlic and add it to the finely chopped bowl. And finally, chop up that cilantro and the prep work is done. Let's fire up the burner and start building up those flavors. Put a couple tablespoons of oil in the pan and heat it up. Once the oil is hot, add the Italian sausage. We only want to brown the sausage and also release some of that pork fat while we're at it. Once the sausage is browned on all sides, pull it. Now flour the chicken and place them in the pot skin down. We want a crispy golden brown when we turn the chicken, so let it cook for a few minutes. Now, turn the chicken and let them cook on the other side for a few more minutes. Look at the color on that skin, nice and golden brown, almost like you battered it and deep fried it. After a couple minutes, pull the chicken and let it rest for a bit. We'll put the chicken and sausage back in soon. Add about two tablespoons of butter to that oil and appreciate all that love because you're about to cook your aromatics in it. Remember that bowl of finely chopped onion, carrot, and celery and the white part of the green onion? Oh yeah, and the garlic? Well, put that in the pot and let it cook for a bit in that same oil that you cooked the sausage and chicken in. We just want to sweat the aromatics a bit or sometimes called translucent. After a couple of minutes, we're ready for the rice. 
Make sure you rinse the rice and get rid of all that unnecessary starch. Now, coat the rice really good in that oil and butter. This is the same procedure I use for my rice pilaf. We're basically toasting the rice. This will bring out a richer, nuttier flavor. Stir the rice around for a couple of minutes. Then add the half can of chili peppers and the pureed tomatoes. Mix it all together and then add the rest of the onions, carrots, and celery. Season with a pinch of salt and pepper and mix it all in. Now we add the four cups of chicken stock. Something to keep in mind is with the oil, butter, and tomatoes, the rice will absorb some of that. So if you like perfect rice, then only add about three and a half cups of stock. I like overcooked rice with this type of dish, so I threw the whole four cups in. Now add the cilantro, season the beans and throw them in, and then the lime juice. It would be so much tangier with fresh limes cooked right in with the rest of these ingredients. But quarantine is what quarantine does, and I don't even know what that means. All I know is I don't have fresh limes. I cut each sausage link into three pieces. I'll put half of them in now and submerge them, cover, and bring this up to a slow boil. Now put the rest of the sausage and the chicken in. We want the chicken and the sausage to stay on the surface. I'll cover this again for about a minute or two. Now put some of those green onions on top and one last pinch of salt and pepper and put it in the oven. I set the oven for 300 for just about an hour. You want to slow cook this until the rice is done. And there you go. This, my friends, is some good old fashioned country cooking. It doesn't matter where you're from, it's hard not to appreciate the love in this dish. I feel like laying down a bed of mixed greens and some arugula. And carefully placing the rice, chicken, and sausage on top. Believe me when I tell you, this chicken was so juicy and so mouthwatering, and it just fell right off the bone. Delicious. And yes, this is my favorite part, eating my hard work. Don't be afraid to try something new. Don't be intimidated. Your kitchen is not a TV set. It is your home. No need to be stressed out. It takes away from the joy of cooking. Remember, the more joy you have in the kitchen, the more joy your family will have at the table. Hey, thanks for hanging out with me. I'm Rich Crankshaw. You're cooking with Crank.